Let's take a look at the molecular geometry for C2H4. We can see from the Lewis structure that there are two carbons. So when we look at molecular geometry, we normally look at the central atom. Well, which one's central? So what we can do is just look at one of those carbons, since it's symmetrical, figure out its molecular geometry, and that'll help us understand the molecular geometry for the whole C2H4 molecule. When we think about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, we think about how those atoms are going to spread out in three dimensions to be as far away from each other as possible. So when we look at this carbon here, we can see that the hydrogens and the carbon, when they spread out, they're going to spread out in a plane and be as far apart from each other in that plane. We can also use the AXN notation to figure out the molecular shape. A, that's that central carbon we have there. X, that's the number of atoms bonded to that carbon. So we have one, two, three. 3, so we have AX3, and then N, those are the non-bonding electron pairs. Well, we don't have any non-bonding pairs on that carbon. They're all involved in bonds, so we're not going to worry about N. So that leaves us with AX3. So you could have either memorized that AX3 is trigonal planar, or you could look it up on a table. So as we go down our table here, we're looking for AX3. We have AX2, and then right below it, well, there's AX3, and that is trigonal planar and the bond angle is 120 degrees. So C2H4 has a molecular geometry of trigonal planar. Let's go back and draw in the bond angles. So here we have 120 degrees. And this right here is also 120, and this itself is 120. So they all add up to 360, and that makes sense. So that's the molecular geometry for C2H4. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.